Welcome to the first episode of Rock in the Arts with Cowboy and Friends. Today I have Mr. Mike Ferrara, co-host, and we'd like to welcome Hawkland, a facilitator of one of the more popular drum circles in the Hudson Valley. Thank welcome, you. Uh, Thank you. Hawkland. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. So, how long have you been drumming for? Uh, personally, I've only been drumming for about five years. I think that, you know, we all, you know, see, you know, drumming and rhythm, you know, from a very young age, and we bang on counters and pans and pots and everything else, but actually playing these kinds of drums, about five years. It seems like you've been drumming for a lot longer than that, but um, do you come from a musical background? I play the guitar. I consider myself a 20-year-old beginner. I'm playing the guitar. Um, and I enjoy that, but I've been playing the drums, I enjoy playing the drums, but I also have a music business background, so I've always been around music and musicians and wow. in that world. So, um, tell us about your drum circles. Sure. I have a drum circle in Poughkeepsie, New York, and it started out years ago with other facilitators, five people, sometimes less, sometimes I couldn't even have a circle because there weren't enough people, but that was before the day of, you know, social media and, you know, this age where we could connect via computer. So I put the word out and community answered and now we've got a circle that ranges anywhere from 30 to 100 people. I tried to have a drum circle once and one person showed up with harmonicas and he was trying to bang them together but it wasn't working. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> what type of people do come to these drum circles? All kinds of people. Uh, people come with babies, uh, you know, toddlers dancing. Uh, I have a 90 year old neighbor who comes. My mother who's in her 70s has been there. It's just all walks of life, all ages, all people, some that have never drummed before, some that have been drumming, you know, for many, many years. Well, Mike. Well, I want to ask, Lynn, if you don't mind about facilitator, you, you, you mentioned that. What does a facilitator do? It's, it's kind of like a conductor. Um, when you've got 100 people drumming, many of them who've never drummed before, somebody's got to keep them on the right track. So I usually start a, a basic beat for them and give them a few pointers and tips and, um, you know, we get the show rolling. and try to keep the energy up and the spirit up, the volume, bring it up or down. And, you know, there's usually, you know, other good players in the audience are in the uh, circle as well. So between, you know, my facilitating and some of the better drummers, we usually keep it going. How, how many people, did will we ask it, how many people have attended these drum circles at one time, say? I think the biggest one so far is 104 people. Wow. Yeah. Have you ever been to one, Mike? Well, as a matter of fact, um, yes. This. This is, <laughs> this is my very first drum circle, uh, so I'm, I'm really excited. But I also heard about there's uh, some uh, um, uh, spiritual aspects to it as well, right? Sure. Um, not all drum circles, but certainly mine there is, or ours, I like to say. Um, usually when I have a drum circle, I try and weave in some type of a theme. Um, sometimes, you know, that might be, you know, the season, or it might be if we're having a real stormy night, or you know, if there's been, you know, a passing of somebody, some icon, or people have been through a hard time in their lives. So I try to create a theme, and people can actually use the energy of the drum circle, put names into the drum circle, and bring those people, you know, in as part of the group. Really? I understand that uh, an icon in the drum circle world just passed away recently, Lane Redman? Lane Redman, yes. She, she passed away recently. She was uh, an icon in uh, frame drumming, hand drumming, um, also, you know, for the women's movement in drumming. And she did a lot of studies about uh, drumming and goddess culture and you know has pictures of women that were actually holding drums similar to this one here and in the museums they said woman with cake pan and she uh, <laughs> went about setting the record straight on, on some of those uh, photos in some of those museums. This drum here actually was uh, played by a student of hers who studied with her in Egypt for about six months. So woman with cake pan? That gives new meaning to the uh, phrase uh, woman's places in the kitchen, right? Yeah. Is that the considered a frame drum? Um, it is a considered a frame drum. There are many different kinds of frame drums. Uh, some are made out of wood, some are ceramic. And I'm guessing because they're built on a frame, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, that, that, that's an excellent guess, <laughs> you know, right? pure natural. Um, the spiritu spirituality of the, do you think they could do a drum circle that would um, possibly be able to grow hair for him? Hmm. <laughs> well, thank you, <laughs> No. Well. Shit. We could try. Well, as we could try. Fact, no promises. We'll do that today. Well, as a matter of fact, I was bolder no promises. before we started today, and we beat the drum a little bit. And I think I grew another hair here. So yeah, Lynn, I think I see one sticking right? up there. Well, yeah. Lynn, so seriously, I, I recently read about um, a really large drum circle in New Paws. Were you involved with that? It wasn't actually a drum circle. It was a gathering, and they had a lot of um, you know fairly famous uh, drum performers there. Uh, it's called Million Women Drummers Gathering. It's an initiative, a global initiative. It was definitely an event and a gathering at Ulster County Fairgrounds. 
but it's also an ongoing initiative and they're going to continue to have future gatherings and it's really about sustainability of trees and musical instruments whether they be drums guitars violins pianos all these instruments are made out of wood so if we don't take care of the trees we're not going to have these beautiful instruments or the beautiful music that they create that, that's funny that you should say that because I just started building guitars mm -hmm. and I noticed that the different types of wood I use mm -hmm. resonate a different tone sure. and it all depends on the wood it, it's pretty cool sure the thickness the the diameter, so many factors for sure. Also, probably using the hands as opposed to sticks, and right. And Very what do different you use? Do you use your hands. I mean, well, I usually play the drum bass with the drum circles, and that's definitely hand drumming. Um, my medicine drum, I usually pay, play with a, a beater or a mallet. Um, you know, it's really a personal preference and the type of drum that you're playing. What does drum drumming in a drum circle mean to you as an individual? Because I've been to some of your events, and mm -hmm. I go there with one thing in mind that I'm gonna have a good old fun time which I do but when I get there it kinda evolves to a more spiritual thing and mm -hmm. it's great you do that thing with the sage does that have a special meaning to sage? Well sage is basically used for you know cleansing and clearing um, I have a very good friend who refers to it as a spiritual vacuum cleaner so it's just a nice way to just kind of bring everybody down on a Friday night after a long week of working and it smells really nice and uh, balances, you know, the energy in the room and people, you know, that are used to coming and doing that sort of thing feel good to be able to do that. Um, so I pass that around the circle, those who want to, you know, engage in that do. Um, to me, drumming, the drum circles are really about community. I, I like that term, though, spiritual vacuum cleaner, because I dance around my house when I vacuum. It'd be so much easier just to light some sage <laughs> and let it do the work <laughs> for you me. There you go. Right? So, uh, you know, I think I can get into this drumming thing. Yeah, sure. yeah that's great. I, I notice um, a lot of I've been to a few drum circles and I don't really have a drum so I use compound buckets but they have a nice tone. <laughs> <laughs> they do actually. I've seen people do it you know yeah, years ago on Venice Beach for the first time and you know people actually bring them to the right. drum circles and they dream all, bring all sorts of drums to the drum circles. There's so many types. I was just telling some of my buddies the other day that um, I, I was down in Clearwater Beach and there was a guy with five compound buckets and he's going at it, boom, boom, boom. He was fantastic. Mm -hmm. So after the 20 minute solo, I, I kid you not, they filled up his bucket with dollar bills or tens or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, and so I went up to him and he said, man, I said, you are really a great drummer. Why aren't you in a band? He goes, and he shows me in his <laughs> bucket, he goes, do I need to be in a band for a hundred bucks a day? And you know, this guy was making like, yeah. 100 bucks He's every 20 right minutes but um you know drumming is drumming like you said i think babies probably before they're born can detect rhythm patterns well think about the the main you know uh drum beat you know the central rhythm right here right that's right, right. i know how it goes well it's funny you should mention babies and you know uh, um, uh, or in babies in the womb and you mentioned something before off camera about even playing drums on water didn't you using the water right. itself is well the you had mentioned a uh, million women drummers gathering up in New Paltz and the founder of that Ubaka Hill who's um, you know internationally known uh, drummer has been drumming a long time she actually uh, has pl I see I've seen her play drums on the water on the lake I live on a lake here in uh, Dutchess County and she's also played you know drums on the earth and I have friends you know who will play on raptors and barns and things like that so you can mm. create a drum out of almost anything. It's probably tough to mic, mic the water though. That would be <laughs> yeah that would be a little tricky. You know, you know I was thinking though you, do it you from know a, like with a boom. I, I had a neighbor you know and um, I used to hear banging <laughs> on the walls. They all moved away. But well <laughs> they did all move away but when I did have neighbors I used to hear the banging on the walls and I thought that they were telling me to shut up you know and quiet down but I guess they were just doing a little. Well look how many like people tap right? Work. Yeah. People do nervous tapping you know. That's right. Well so and there's the, the more release cold, of energy. Right? It w was a tapping thing. I wonder mm -hmm. if that had, and there's also the, the drums, right? Was, is, wasn't that a form of communication at one time, too? Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so sure. it fits into kind The of Native of Americans thing. use that to communicate. It's a form of communication, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Ceremony. Well, mm -hmm. It's cheaper than, uh, you know, <laughs> telephones <laughs> and, you know, and cell phones. Maybe mm -hmm. we should Better go for the to environment, that, you know? too. I, I notice a lot of different types of drums. Can you tell us a little about the oh, different types to. of drums that are used in a drum circle? Is sure. it is it to one particular origin or? No, I suppose there are some circles that are, but ours is, you know, very open, whatever people want to bring. These are both djembes, um, and that's uh, an African drum. 
The drum down here is actually my medicine drum. I use that drum for shamanic work and that's the one you need. Spiritual Mike. work, exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, thank uh, you we've got the frame drums. Important. We've talked about um, people bring tambourines. We've got you know people bringing rattles. Uh, people dance. Sometimes they'll bring even a flute, but it gets drowned out a little bit. But yeah, any instrument is fine. You know, it's not you know really. Uh, a string instrument type of environment only because you really wouldn't hear the strings. Right. Also the artwork on there is, is beautiful. Can you tell us something about that? Sure. Uh, this particular drum is made by a couple friends of mine who attend the drum circle, Dave and Tommy. When you say make the drum, you mean the body, everything? Well, or? they actually they get the shells uh, from a sustainable um, company in Africa. So these are trees that have already fallen. So these trees are not cut down to create these drums, which I really, really respect. Uh, the name of their company is Primal Percussions, and Tommy, who is one of the partners, actually does this henna work on the drum head. So he'll talk to you about what you want on your drum, and you know he'll help lay it out and design it for you and do the artwork. That's beautiful. If you know those that don't know what henna is, it, it's a dye that I think came from Eastern Asia, where they actually apply this henna to your skin, and it stains your skin. Mm -hmm. And being that the drum head is actually a skin it works well and that's really beautiful mm -hmm. and as an artist myself I can appreciate that um, well, it's, it's a good way you know if you know people know me as Hawkland so obviously there's a hawk on there it's a good way to personalize your drum too and the drum oh, I, I mean it. it's a living thing you've got the tree you've got the animal skin yeah. you bring your personality into it it really becomes part of who you are and of your art well, well let me guess what would cowboy have on his drum skin hmm. that's it's a stretch what do you think cowboy I would probably have a cow skull. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, there, I've also noticed there are other types of drums like a, what do you call it, a djembak or something? A, a, a doombak. A doombak. Doombak, yeah, that's that's more Eastern culture. Is that a um, deeper sound? Or? It's actually sometimes like if you hear like a kirtan music or um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with what kirtan is, but it's more of the like the spiritual Indian call and response type music. Uh, you'll hear a lot of doombaks and there's a lot of different types of Eastern drums that Actually, they aren't really deeper. You can get deeper ones. You can get higher ones, depending, again, on the size of the drum and right. the tone. Beautiful yeah. sound, though. Well, I'm really interested in, in the spiritual side of it, you know, uh, just the healing aspects of it and the feel good. And that's why I personally would think that it would be for that, and you correct me if I'm wrong, that one would use their hands on the drum, just feels like it's closer. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. One of the things, like with a drum like this, if people you know, are educated, they realize that there's a grain, right? So animals have fur on them. So if you pet an animal this way, it's very soft. If right, you go that right. way, it's against the grain. The same is true with the skin. To honor the drum, you always want to make sure that the head is facing out. That's a custom. So all these little things come into it, you know, from the indigenous cultures that we learn over time. Where's the head of that drum, then? <laughs> I, mean, I, no, uh, <laughs> I can actually have to feel it would be like this. Oh, I see. So you can so, tell I feel. Yeah, it's okay. softer this yeah. way. It's a little bit against the grain. You can feel it that way. Right. I've played this drum long enough now where you can't feel it quite as dominantly, but I also know the pattern of the drum by now. So, Lynn, I, I know you really don't want to dwell on this ne next subject too much, but I noticed in some of your photos from your your Facebook page, uh, Drumming with Hawkland, is that the name of it? Yes. Y you had quite a few pictures with birds of prey. Mm -hmm. Can you just tell us a little about that? Oh, sure. I'd be happy to. Um, I've had an interest in birds of prey since I was very young and lived out west. And I have volunteered um, at uh, raptor facilities um, doing rehab work. I also got my falconer's license. Um, I do a little bit different. Uh, a lot of falconers do it just for hunting. Uh, some falconers do it just for rehabbing. I also bring it into the spiritual realm. I do uh, teach spiritual classes at uh, various locations and really enjoy that and really like you know the totem meanings of the birds themselves. What do you mean by rehabbing, though? You said some do it for rehabbing, rehabbing the birds. Well, birds, you know, they'll, they'll get injured or, oh. you know, poisoned or something like that, and they'll need, you know, care, just like, you know, us humans do, right? Yeah. Do you have Our rehabbers are called doctors. Do you set them back in free when they're whenever rehabbed? Whenever possible. That's always the first, that's always the goal, whenever possible. And you work with it, well, diff whatever comes in as a rehab bird, but... Uh, well, well, you know, licensing hawk? requirements, you know, can yeah. be very limiting. Um, I work with a uh, red-tailed hawk. Predominantly, Lady Z is a hawk that I've worked with for quite some time, and that's actually her on that drum. And Mike has a little, what was that, a parakeet? I do have a parakeet, yes, and um, <laughs> she, she, heals, she heals me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. You know. I believe it. So, um, anyway. <laughs> so, you, you were asking me a little bit, you know, before about my um, 
my music background, I'm not really sure I got into too much of the business end of it, but I used to travel with the purple on the road. So it's interesting to kind of draw the, uh, you know, the likenesses of what I'm doing now versus what I was doing then because they're so different. Um, but that was a lot of fun too. So, you know, then you've got a whole different kind of drum yes. kit, right? And Deep Purple is the real heavy metal band. Uh, Smoke on the Water, right? Wasn't that? Smoke on the Water is one of the right. biggest hits. Richie Blackmore, yep. And I, I don't want to give away my age, but when I was a I'll youngin, I'll give it away. when I, I was a youngin, <laughs> we all had CB radios. Is that what they were called? CB radios? And we all That's had handles, my time, I don't know. and my, right. handle, my handle was Highway Star, which was uh, yeah. Deep Purple song. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? And yeah. Ian Gillen, I believe, wrote that song. He was the lead singer for many years. That must have been pretty funsy, traveling well, with them. Well, you know, it, it, it was great. I was fortunate enough to be with the original lineup during their last tour, The Battle Rages On. And the last show that they did was in Helsinki, Finland, and I was there for that last really? show. It was spirited, as many of them were. Um, but it was really a great experience for me, and um, you know, working for the management for those guys was, you know, a lot of fun for me. I met a lot of really interesting people and traveled to a lot of really well, interesting places. For uh, sure. We're waiting for the book, Hawkland. You know, I, yeah. I know there's got to be. A well, book I think in other that. people have already written that book yeah. by now. Um, but. Sure. But how do you go then from from that to traveling with a with a rock band and what all that brings, and then you know, having this drum circle that you do now? Mm. How did that evolve? Well, you know, I. I, I guess they're related somehow, but they don't really feel related to me. You know, I got it more on a spiritual path later in my life. Um, it's always been in me, but you know, actually getting uh, on that path and drumming and drumming spiritually, I wasn't doing any of that back then. So it feels a little bit separate. It just happened to lead me down, you know, this road, this little side street. I, I think music is music, and it all ties in somehow. And I mean, personally, I like all forms of music. I like blues i like country sometimes i even like your songs no, no, I'm, I'm flattered by <laughs> since you put your name on the songs that i write so i am flattered by that <laughs> well y you give me one word to one of my songs and i have to give you co-writing and i and i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> well we should collaborate sometime well well you should come to one of our shows because if you said that your small circles are only 30 that's a big show for us so you bring your drum circle <laughs> there We'll have a whole crowd, you know, and it would work out fine for just everybody. We could do that. We'll get to tell that, that. that is so f funny. We'll that bring you the rhythm section. Listen to me. I wrote a song called Stand Together, and we haven't even started doing it with my band yet, but I envision a 10 minute drum solo mm -hmm. intro. And, that, you know. Isn't that called Wipeout? If my, if my drummer <laughs> tried to do it, he'd probably pass out. So <laughs> it would be good to have like a drum circle. That that would be awesome. I'd love to work on that with you. Yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it. Yeah, I, I look forward to going to one. I mean, aside from this mini circle that we have here today. Uh, and yeah. next time you go, I'd, well, I'd really is this a circle? Even though it is only, it's like well, a, you this know, is it's like not a, a solo, this right? Is like a, a drum arc. Well, it's, it's an arc. Song. It is a drum arc. Right. <laughs> Actually, um, when I went to one of Ubaka Hills. Uh, facilitated drum circles, it was really great because she said it doesn't always have to be in a circle because sometimes if you've got people ahead of you and behind you, you feel a different resonance, right? So she actually set us up in a spiral, which was another fun way of doing it. Circle's great because, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's connected, right? But you can still connect in, in other ways. But yeah, I would love for you to come second Friday, second Friday every month. I was at one of those at, at the Lutheran Church, which is, I, I believe it was round, right? Uh, the you're talking about my drum circle? Yes. No, that was actually not the Lutheran Church. That was the uh, UU uh, Fellowship, uh, uh, Universal yeah. Unitarian Fellowship. Yeah, well, that's the fellowship. one I was at, and, and it was in a circle, it's a round but room. it was like four rows deep. Yeah. You know, they, that's yeah. how many people at this circle. It was like unbelievable. It's great. We refer to it as our spaceship sometimes because it's got, you know, it's a round room and it's got like an octagon, you know, type yeah, roof. Yeah, oh, it was and great. It, it was feels great. like that energy is just going to raise it right up and we're going to take off and go up into outer space. So. Uh, Again, you, you, you're having one every second Friday of the month. Every second Friday. The next one is November 8th. And they're at the Unitarian? They are. They Do you are have the an address for that? Um, 67 South Randolph Road in Poughkeepsie. I'm surprised I remembered that, but yeah, 67 make, South Randolph try Road. Try and make that experience. It's, it's something uh, to be at and see. And if you don't have a drum, they, they have plenty of extra drums. You don't need to bring your own drum. It, it's really a great time, something different to do on a Friday night. And uh, Well, you can bring a bucket, right? I mean, you can just... You can bring a bucket. Bang there's bang drums there. There's and so many extra drums. I, I, if you think about it, right, the drum is probably the very first instrument. I mean, you know, when man sure. started banging, you know, on his chest. Yeah, don't bang on the mic. <laughs> oh. You'll get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, you know, they that, uh, like you said before, they 
probably spoke to each other with like caveman times. <laughs> oh yeah, De definitely. You know, it's a form of communication for sure. That it, and we do other things too. I mean, it's not always at the UU Church. I think Cowboy. One time you came to one we did at a horse farm, and that fundraiser. Was, it was a fundraiser was to benefit um, the Lucky Orphan Horse Farm. Um, which is a wonderful facility that, you know, provides, you know, care and shelter for horses in need. So that, you know, of course, with the kind of work that I do with animals and raptors really spoke to me. We're hoping to do something like with hawks and horses and collaborate in the future. But anything like that, you know, anybody has any ideas, I'm always, you know, like, you know, loving to collaborate. And the horse one was, you know, a special spot in my heart because I've been around horses my mm -hmm. whole life. And it was, it was a good time. And the food was really good too, I'll tell you. <laughs> the, food was no, good. The, the jump circle is like a family. Everybody mm -hmm. brings food, everybody, uh, you know, it, it's a good time. Well, yeah, it's, it's a, a good way to look, it is, like I said, it's about community, yeah. you know. I don't like to call it my drum circle. It's like, I, I was one person who started it, you know. When there's 104 people there, that's not mine. Well, if Mike goes, he'll call it his drum circle. Yeah. <laughs> it's about putting the call and out. you'll sign your name to it. But, yeah. but you. <laughs> <laughs> but there's only one facilitator, though. Is, is that how it works? Well, actually, um, I would like to, in the future, have guest facilitators. And, you know, I do charge a $5 donation to cover space, and anything left over I try to tuck away and either give to a benefit like we did for the horse farm or, you know, if we can in the future, bring in a facilitator. Um, before the Million Women Drummers Gathering, Ubaka Hill came in, and she talked about the gathering, but she also played a little bit and, you know, talked a little bit. So try to keep it interesting and shake it up a little bit, too, from time to time. Well, I hope I can um, get you to play at one of my benefits. I'm planning on having an Alzheimer's benefit f around the holiday time. Sure. And that would be uh, a nice change of entertainment. Mm -hmm. But anyway, w we have one more question, right? About now, I think. Uh, mm. Are we going to get to hear you play one of these drums? Well, if you ask me really nice, <laughs> and if you play with me. Hawkland. If you play with Wait me. Wait a minute. <laughs> but you have to say, please. Wait, do you have a rattle for Mike? Well, there's some rattles over there, and there's a, um, uh, a terracotta drum. At. He well, does. Thank you. Hawking. In my That's band. My I mean, talk about instruments from a young age, right? I've been playing a rattle since I was at least 33. And since he's been in my band, he plays a rattle and wines. Really? Yeah, Mike. Well, thank you. Nah, he, Mike is all around uh, utility guy in the band. Which means I carry the equipment. But <laughs> I got is, it. Uh, You're a roadie. This is great. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> um... What can I play? My belly? Well, there's a couple drums over there. There's the uh, clay drum, the terracotta back, uh, is back it, drum. Is that this one? Mm hmm And that's actually a really good example of how many different types of drums there are, right? That's yeah. terracotta, wow, clay. Wow, I didn't even know. Oh, a clay pot. You can pot. get ceramic. Yeah. So if I drop it, I'm in trouble. Yeah, the sinew do there. I, do I play this on my lap? You can play it any way you like. On your you know, lap, you can hold it up and play it. You can play it with a stick, without a stick. I don't think we have one handy right now, so your hands will be the instrument. Okay, well. All right, you guys ready? Yes. Uh, All right. Can we listen a little bit before we go into no, this? No, I'm going to stop if you don't start playing right away. Okay, this is going to be fun. Ready? Your first drum Don't circle, be shy. I'm, I'm very excited and I'm healed. And my hair is growing as we I'm speak. Watching I, I, I can I'm see watching it. it. I'm watching it. I can you. see it. I'm excited. And there's really no right or wrong. I mean, obviously, you want to be in beat and you want to have rhythm and synchronicity. Uh, so but it's really about, back. you know, <laughs> what's in here, right? Be creative. Right, that's right. That's okay, right. Yeah. you ready? All right. Is this a particular style? Hawkins 
style. Auckland style. I see what you mean. My, my feet are starting to get happy. I want to dance. Do people oh, dance at these absolutely. drum circles? I encourage it really? as, much as, as much as possible. The kids love to dance. You know, sometimes you get three, four kids, and they're just running around in a circle dancing, and the adults will join in and hold hands and dance in a circle. That's when it really gets fun. And I'm yeah. guessing that you don't really, beginners, it works for everyone. Absolutely everybody. Absolutely um, everybody. You know, you know that's, that's what I, I, I notice most when we play a gig, especially we play outside, is the kids that come by and have that automatic rhythm. You know, that's, right. that's, that right. makes it fun, aside from the enjoyment we get out of it and the paycheck. Healthy fun. But, yeah. I don't Healthy fill a fun. bucket like your drummer friend, but, uh, <laughs> but we do have a tip jar. <laughs> well, Miss Hawkland, this was a great first episode, and I had a lot of fun. Great. So do I. I feel healed. I feel ready. And really do looking forward to, like to your attending when you... your head's a little warmer? <laughs> I, I actually think I grew a hair or two. <laughs> Good. And um, so thank you for that. Well, then we've done our work here. I'm throwing the Rogaine in the garbage. No, I'm going to use the tubes to bang on. <laughs> well, but I really appreciate you guys having me here. It's been a uh, lot of it was, fun. It was great. I, I think I couldn't have picked a better person for our first episode. I yes. have to agree with you. And please do come, Gil. Off. I mean, I, we've yeah, seen I Cowboy at the Circles, but... Would love to see you there too. Yeah, well, if you're going to be there, I'm going to go. If I have to just go with him, but well, you, you know. have to wear an outfit too, you know. Well, this is the one I have. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, aren't these hats? Aren't these? Got, don't these have something to do with well, you guys I, and your outfits? As a matter of fact, is there yeah. a Michael hat up there? Well, and a yeah, cowboy really hat up Michael there. Hat, yes. This, this was is the a Hawkman hat. Here. His head got too big, and so he no longer fits in that. But uh, the Rose hat. All right. Well, we have to wrap it up. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the first episode of Rock in the Arts with Cowboy and Friends, and. We hope to see you around next time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Miss Hawkland, and thank, thank you, you Bluesman.